Where's that groundhog? I'm Charlie Sykes. Sunday Insight starts right now. Good morning and welcome to Sunday Insight. In the week that was, State Senator Glenn Grothman announced that he's running for Congress against longtime veteran Congressman Tom Petri. Grothman's challenge to his fellow Republicans sets up a high-profile race between conservatives and the party's Washington establishment. Bo Ryan takes his badgers to the final four. Milwaukee's district attorney rules that a janitor who shot two teenagers was acting in self-defense. No charges will be issued. The White House out 7.1 million enrollees for Obamacare, but it's not clear how many of those have actually paid. Another tragic shooting at Fort Hood leaves five dead. The U.S. Supreme Court strikes down some campaign contribution limits, saying they conflict with free speech rights. Congressman Paul Ryan proposes a budget that he says balances in 10 years and cuts $5.1 trillion from the deficit. And Hank the dog gets fixed and goes on the DL as baseball gets underway again. But we start with last week's low turnout election. I'll make that very low turnout election. But there were still some interesting outcomes. Voter, voters ousted the mayors of West Bend and South Milwaukee. And in Milwaukee County, voters overwhelmingly approved a referendum to slash the pay of county supervisors. And union-backed school board candidates were defeated in the one-time union stronghold of Kenosha. Joining me on our panel this morning, the Milwaukee Community Journal's Michael Holt, former state representative Michelle Lichens, Susie Falk of the Falk Group, and political consultant Mary Jo Boss. So let's start with you, Mary Jo. Who were the biggest winners and losers of the last Tuesday's election? Well, I'd say the biggest winner was Chris Abley. Um, the voters overwhelmingly yeah. approved his restructuring of the county board and, and uh, just reforming the process. I think the biggest losers were the Kenosha school board members uh, who tried to pass an illegal labor contract and the, the voters threw them out and brought in the conservatives. Okay, Susie Falk. Yeah, you know, my winner is probably uh, Chris Abley yeah. as well, Mary Jo. I totally agree with you on that. I think now he's going to be able to roll up his sleeves and get to work without some interference by the county board. My, my big loser for the week, I think, is our county board supervisor, Marina Dimitri yeah, a yeah, yeah, Avic. Right. Yeah, yeah, good job. Um, she is now going to be running for the assembly in the 19th mm -hmm. district. She's going to hold on to her, her other seat. Mm -hmm. And, you know, honestly, the biggest losers would be if she wins the assembly, she's going to be splitting her time pretty thin. Okay. Michelle uh, Winners, the citizens of Milwaukee County yeah. because they had a choice to make and they made the right decision when it came to, you know, reducing the time and the amount of pay for the Milwaukee County board members. But I think we really have to look at the losers across the entire state. Wisconsin Progress got very active this year mm -hmm. and they are claiming that they've turned over a number of county boards. Jefferson County, Trempolo County, Buffalo County, St. Croix County. Uh, the Democrats mm. have taken over that county and it's a strong Republican county up there. So I think we need to pay attention really to who's running for spring elections okay, across the Mike, state. Okay, Michael, well, one of the losers is this beneath the, the radar was Cedric Cornwall, who uh, ran for judge, circuit court right. and would have added another black face mm -hmm. to the courts. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen. But the biggest loser, of course, are the supervisors. And I think so, actually some of their constituents, because what you're going to see now is about half, if not 80 percent of them, leaving office, and with them will come that experience. So. Experience of doing exact. what, though? <laughs> Whatever they do. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the problem. The voters couldn't figure out what they did all day, which is why 71% of the voters voted to slash their, their, their full-time pay to part-time pay. Well, uh -huh. yeah, I mean, that's true. But there were some supervisors who did put in full time and actually use their, their office as a platform to, to talk about a lot of other issues, mm -hmm. like uh, Russell Stamper and... and, and uh, yeah. And Bowen. And Who's already looking for another job. I mean, obviously, I think the biggest losers here, and they're, they're, they're twofold, is number one, the Milwaukee County supervisors who were just soundly repudiated. I mean, the public's on to them mm -hmm. here. And uh, the fact that they didn't get it afterwards, the fact that Marina Dmitrievich is talking about forming a task force. Oh, really? You know, I mean, aren't you a task force in yourself? You know, and then you had uh, David Bowen, who's ripping the voters because not enough voters voted. I mean, when you anytime a politician is blaming, ripping the voters after an election, you know, things are not going well for them. So they're big losers. The Union East is down in Kenosha. This was a big defeat. They drew the line down there in Kenosha. They pumped in a lot of money into Kenosha because that was one of their their last defenses against Act 10. They illegally rammed through that contract. And the fact that you had conservative, anti-union-backed candidates win in Kenosha is extraordinary because Kenosha used to be hardcore. I guess here's the question, though, and you, you mentioned that the winner was, uh, was Chris Abley. 
You know, does anybody really think, I, I think this was a good referendum that it passed, but will Milwaukee County government really become less dysfunctional with a, with a part-time board? I mean, isn't it possible that we're just simply going to replace one group of overpaid dysfunctional board members with... No, I think, no. I think they're going to become more functional. I think yeah. that, the, you know, if you've got part-time people, they should focus on what they should be doing, which is policy making and oversight of the budget. So I think if they can just stay focused and spend part-time doing that, I think we'll be very effective. Okay. Yeah. What do you think? I, I would agree. I think, first of all, they won't have quite as much time to get yeah. in trouble or at least as much trouble. But also you'll have some people who may have a side job as an, a real estate agent, a lawyer, whatever, who don't want to devote their life to, to the hassles of county board and all the, the wrangling, but who actually want to get things done will get in there and do it efficiently. Okay, uh, an another big loser was uh, we had mayors in the South Milwaukee and a mayor in uh, West Bend who were, who were ousted. I thought the mayor in West Bend, I thought it was a very, very interesting, I, I'm sorry, the mayor of Waukesha, I didn't mean West Bend, <laughs> the mayor of Waukesha, I thought it was fascinating because Jeff Screamer managed to antagonize both liberals and conservatives when he said that he was not going to be meeting either with Barack Obama or with Scott Walker because he said they were both extremists. I mean, it's hard in this state to antagonize both ends of the political spectrum at, 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 at once and, and he lost badly. So what has your glass half full this week and what has your glass half empty? Let's go around the table. Michael Holt, you're first. Well, we just talked about this. My glass is half full because Russell Stamper was the top vote getter in the special election for the 15th automatic district. Both surviving candidates are excellent, but Stamper would be a superior choice. Well, my glass is half empty because in an announcing his victory, the Journal Sentinel published a photo of David Bowen. Believe it or not, we don't all look alike. Ooh, Michelle Litchens. Uh, my glass is half empty because David Letterman is retiring. Mm -hmm. It's half full because CBS could find someone else who is less political and actually funny to take his place. Susie Falk. Yeah, my glass is half full because cancer patients can now take a pill form of chemotherapy in the comforts of their own home and pay much less for the treatment than they had, thanks to a bill passed by the Senate and signed into law by Governor Walker this week. My glass is half empty because we have a long way to go in the war on cancer. While treatment such as oral cancer pill is less harsh and disabling today, the overall death rate from cancer has dropped only 5% since 1950. Okay, Mary Jo Boss. My glass is half full because it's the first week of baseball season and the Brewers have an exciting new addition to the team who's the talk of the town and the league. <laughs> My glass is half empty because that exciting new addition is a dog who's on the disabled list, but he's a really cute dog. Well, my glass is half full because the U.S. Supreme Court has ruled the First Amendment takes priority over campaign spending limits, but it's half empty because here in Wisconsin, we still treat some political speech as a crime despite the First Amendment. Now, he's out of his job as Assembly Majority Leader. Now there are calls for Bill Kramer to lose his seat in the state legislature. Bill Kramer has already been ousted as Majority Leader of the State Assembly. Well, now there are calls for him to resign from the Assembly altogether. Kramer was stripped of his assembly leadership position after an incident in which he was accused of groping a legislative aide during a trip to Washington, D.C. Since then, he's reportedly been in rehab. Well, then, last week, the Waukesha County District Attorney's Office charged Kramer with two felony counts of sexual assault for an incident that allegedly occurred in 2011 in which he grabbed and groped a woman in a parking lot after a Republican event. On Thursday... Assembly Republican leaders called on Kramer to resign his seat immediately, saying that he had, quote, lost the confidence and trust of his colleagues and has brought disgrace to the institution and the state and raising the possibility of a recall if he refuses. Now, Michelle Lichens, you're a former legislator, former, former colleague. First of all, do you agree with that call that he should resign? And do you think he will? I do completely agree with that. Mm -hmm. I think he gained a lot of respect from members during uh, what he did during Act 10. Mm -hmm. He was great. Uh, but at the same time, he should be innocent until proven guilty in yeah, a court of yeah. law. But what he said to that police officer when that police officer mm -hmm. talked to him about the sexual assault charges that are yeah. uh, lodged, lodged against him, uh, what he said was unacceptable. What, he made what, that, what, what he made that into a joke. Yeah. He talked about fake breasts mm -hmm. to a police officer about being charged with a felony. He embarrassed his constituents. He embarrassed the institution of the state assembly. He needs to apologize to everyone, and he needs to resign. Susie Falk. You know what? There's not much time left in his term, and he's not going to uh, mm -hmm. run again. So he should just step aside. Please, he's not going to be effective. He's been stripped of his committee assignments. Mm -hmm. You know, I just say go away, say you're sorry, and, and try a different career. Okay, but that's something he has not done. Um, for, you know, first of all, that has been several weeks since he was stripped of his position, several weeks since he disappeared from the public scene. But he has never, as far as I know, 
uttered a single word of apology or contrition, nothing that mm -hmm. recognizes the this, 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 this seriousness. And I think that's kind of an issue. And I think what Michelle was referring to was, you know, he, he, a police detective calls him up. This is last week when he's presumably, you know, now sober from, mm -hmm. from his rehab and asks him about the incident. And he says, well, she has nice doctor enhanced breasts and I, you know, wouldn't have any, any incentive to do that. Then he was also asked about the fact that she had written a contemporaneous letter. Actually, a lawyer wrote a letter to him basically outlining the sexual assault, telling him, you know, to stay away from her. And what he tells the, the detective, oh, I barely even read the letter. This is a guy who still is not taking it seriously, is not taking responsibility for his actions. Well, you know, and yeah. his history of boorish behavior is one of the worst kept secrets in Madison. So it's not as though this is a new revelation. People yeah. have known about it for years, and I think it's really a teachable moment for the parties. If they had handled this issue before uh, before it came yeah. to the felonies, yeah. um, we wouldn't be dealing with this, his constituents wouldn't be without someone, and those women, the last at yeah. least, might not have had that happen to them if the, the legislators yeah. had said, hey, get in line, yeah. or, you know. Mike, Michael Holt. Now, his, his attorney, you know, in, in, in fairness, his, his attorney, James Gatsky, is saying that there's a rush to judgment, you know, doesn't he deserve his, his day in, in court. court. You are innocent until, uh, convicted, uh, in, until, uh, until you're convicted. But it, the legislature can have a, a different standard, can't it? Yeah, and, and he has been convicted by the public of being an idiot. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, you know, we can't get rid of politicians who are idiots, otherwise we wouldn't have anybody representing us at any level of government. Now, I don't think there's enough time for a recall election. No. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it would be nice if he was resigned, but if he doesn't, I mean, what can you really do? Well, there, there was the possibility of expelling him under the state constitution, a two-thirds vote, but that would require hearings, would require testimony, and I think that the conclusion was, in the end, that that would conflict with the criminal prosecution, so I think that's, uh, that is reasonable. But the, the, the thing that I think Bill Kramer's got to ask himself is, you know, how many other people does he want to hurt here? Does he want any shot at redemption? And does he honestly think that continuing to treat this the way he is, that somehow that's going to work out for him? Because I don't see it. Now, you may not want to hear it, but we're going to tell you anyway. Let's hand out some unsolicited advice. Michael Holt, you're first. To all of the Obamacare naysayers, enrollments are passed 7 million by March 31st. Apparently, somebody <laughs> thinks affordable health care is a good idea. Michelle. At to Fort Hood and other military bases, when you post that you are a gun-free zone, the only people who obey those signs are law-abiding gun owners. People who intend to break the law, intend to break the law. So please let our law-abiding military protect themselves. Susie Falk. Dear Sue Black, you are a treasure in Milwaukee. You did amazing things for the parks, and now you're laying the groundwork for a great future for the Milwaukee Wave as its owner. We all benefit from your hard work and your leadership, which involves some pretty tough decisions. Soccer side, the example you're setting for our youth as a leader in our community will pay off dividends down the road. Yeah, but you shouldn't have gotten rid of Keith Tozer. Uh, Mary Jo Boss. My unsolicited advice is for Governor Walker. Don't let anyone give you grief over having a campaign press staffer who once wrote a pro-abortion essay. You need to send a message that different voices and different views are healthy and welcome in the Republican Party and in your administration. You can't talk Big Tent if you don't walk Big Tent. Well, my unsolicited advice is to members of the Milwaukee County Board. The voters are on to your scam. Time for you to think about getting a real job. Next on Sunday Insight, what did state lawmakers get done in their final session of the year? The legislature wrapped up its work last week, cutting taxes, legalizing some drugs, debating educational standards, almost too much to cover. So let's do this. What were the highlights of this legislative session? Give me the good, the bad, and the ugly. Susie, we'll start with you. Yeah. You know, I like what we're doing with school accountability and the whole choice movement. And I think that there's a bigger conversation that's going to be had this summer. And in January, hopefully, we'll have a larger comprehensive accountability bill. But there was something passed that I think makes a lot of sense. And that is that schools will have to prove that they're not fly-by-night school if they want to participate in the, in the choice program. And so you have to prove if you're a school, you got a great idea that you can operate effectively for a year, then you get your, your um, vouchers. Um, the bad or the ugly, I think, is Jim Ott's uh, OWI initiative. I think it's really sick that we can't seem to pass some sort of drunken driving legislation, and we've got a whole bunch of drunks out on the, out on the road, and we seem to celebrate that. Michelle Litchens. Uh, well, 
the good, uh, just leaving aside the tax cuts that they yeah. were able to do yeah. three times this last session, yeah. I think that mental health bill mm -hmm. actually is so important. We have so many people suffering from mental illness out there, and now they've made it easier for families actually to get someone to treatment, mm -hmm. easier for children to seek treatment, and I think that's really important. Okay. There was bad, bad ugly. There are so many things that didn't make it through the Senate, which are so disappointing. The photo ID, we needed school accountability with more teeth, and that should have been able to pass. Yeah. Uh, we should have been able to expand charter schools, the people that can sponsor charter schools and we should have been able to expand school choice in Wisconsin. Okay, good, bad, ugly. Yeah, I, I lean towards Michelle on school choice. You know, I'm a strong school choice mm -hmm. advocate, mm -hmm. but we need to close some of these fly-by-night schools, period. And these state politicians have not shown that they had the mm -hmm. whatever, you know, to pass a kind of legislation. For them to mess around also with the absentee voting to me was ugly. It was abysmal. There was no reason for it, and their, their, their rationale was nonsensical. Now, of course, we did end up getting you know, mm -hmm. some slight little uh, tax relief, so I guess you say that's good. But I think the thing that really stands out to me, though, is this, this bill through which Milwaukee police were not no longer police themselves and investigate police shootings. It would be an outside source. Okay, good, bad, ugly. Well, my good is I think uh, Del Cuenga and the CPA caucus uh, finding the the billion dollar slush yeah. fund at the UW, the, the tax cuts, those are wonderful things and really good for the taxpayers. The bad, along with everybody else, not being able to get through a very, very modest uh, choice expansion, no accountability, um, not being able to get to, yeah. to tweak the voter ID so that it'll pass the muster in the courts, um, that's the bad. I don't see how anything but Kramer can be the ugly. Well, that was that, that is pretty good. Okay, I would say the good is obvious. Obviously, the things you were talking about, the the, the tax cuts, the the uniform hours for in-person absentee voting. I thought that was very good. The bad, the failed, uh, the, the failure to um, pass the legislation that would require MPS to sell those vacant, right. empty schools, yeah. the drunk driving bill, the failure to do voter ID. But the ugliest moment, other than Bill Kramer, had to be the handling of that oral chemotherapy bill. Could they possibly have handled that any? worse than they did. So is what they said this week the same as what you heard? Let's go around the table. Michael Holt. What they said, DPI Superintendent Tony Evers said he is creating a task force to look into the state's abysmal black academic achievement rate. What I heard was, I need a scapegoat because I've run out of excuses. Michelle Lechens. Wisconsin Democrats have chastised and demeaned Republicans about redistricting for the past two years. And last week, I didn't hear a single Democrat berate Dane County supervisors for redistricting their handful of conservatives off the board. Susie Fall. Governor Walker's newly hired campaign spokeswoman, Ali Mari, expressed support for Planned Parenthood and abortion rights a while back, writing in her blog, I'm a Republican and I support Planned Parenthood, a woman's right to choose, access to STD testing, birth control, etc. What I heard was a woman who is not afraid to express a dissenting opinion from her political party and a woman who deserves to be celebrated for doing so. Mary Jo Boss. President Obama said in his White House Rose Garden press conference this week that Obamacare is doing what it's supposed to do. What I heard was, I don't care about sky-high premiums, limited coverage, or system failures. We got to seven million, and that's all that counts. Well, we're on the same wavelength. President Obama said, the debate over Obamacare is over. What I heard, I intend to keep putting lipstick on this pig. Next on Sunday Inside, our panel picks the winners and losers of the week. But first, here's your morning news update. It's time for our panel to pick the winners and losers of the week. Michael Holt, you're first. The loser. They took the Brewers' new mascot, Hank the Dog, from obscurity to national fame. And what was his reward? They had him neutered, Ooh. and then snipped, clipped, <laughs> made impotent. Hank should have gotten an agent. You're, you're taking this personally. <laughs> Michelle Lichens. <laughs> Uh, my loser is Senator Tammy Baldwin. She said the Supreme Court's ruling this week favors corporations and the wealthy. Maybe you need to read the Constitution, Senator. My winner is the U.S. Supreme Court for upholding the First Amendment. Our freedom of speech, our freedom to say whatever we want about any candidate as loudly and unpleasantly as we like, and voters can choose to listen to it or not. Our freedom of speech separates us from the rest of the world. We are lucky the majority of our court still understands that. Susie Falk. My winners are the entrepreneurs and young companies companies in Milwaukee, um, that BizStarts just opened BizForge and they're being helped. BizForge is the region's first collaborative resource center in Schlitz Park. The space um, brings together entrepreneurs and mentors, advisors,
advisors and coaches, service providers, banks and investors, and all other resources and services needed for startups to succeed. My losers are my staff, whose NCAA brackets are shot to heck. Sorry, guys, but I'll be collecting the 20 bucks on Monday. <laughs> Mary Jo Boss. My winner this week is free speech. The Supreme Court got it exactly right by pointing out that no matter how much we may disagree with people or dislike spending money to express their political views, we still spell America with a C, not a K, and free speech is constitutionally protected. My losers are Milwaukee property taxpayers, thanks to the state senate's unwillingness to pass legislation requiring the sale of vacant school buildings in the city of Milwaukee. Property taxpayers will pay nearly $1.5 million in a year in higher property taxes just so MPS can keep these buildings shuttered and keep other school operators out. Well, losers, the union nieces who lost a crucial school board election in Kenosha. Winners, Milwaukee County voters who finally got it right, slashing the pay of the underworked dysfunctional county board. Nicely done. And Michael Holt, you have something else to say here, oh, right? Yeah. My, you you, you left winner. out the winner. I'm very, very fortunate. My parents have just celebrated a 63rd wedding anniversary, which is really important for the black community because 70% of our households are headed by a single parent. Follow their example. We can change around our community. Congratulations. Thanks for joining us and joining for my radio show Monday morning on News Radio 620 WTMJ from 8.30 until noon. Have a great week.